I hope you guys appreciate the things I do for you. When ranking every minigame in Superstars 1 the Patreon poll, I didn't think anything of it. I mean, hey, they're minigames. How hard could that be? Well, it turns out, many as they may be, playing, analyzing, reviewing, and ranking 100 of anything is kind of a lot. But hey, I did it because I love you. This list is based off the Superstars versions of these games. Keep that in mind because this list would be entirely different if I was basing it off the original versions. So hey, go grab some popcorn and get comfy. Because this is all 100 minigames in Mario Party Superstars ranked worst to best. Let's do this. Puddle Paddle. When trying to think of the absolute worst minigame they brought back, I ended up landing on Puddle Paddle, a 2v2 where you slowly drift around on a raft trying to get coins. It might have been interesting if it worked like Mario Party 8's Road to Victory, where one player can steer the boat right and the other player can steer the boat left, but it's not like that. You mash the A button and fight over control of the raft. This is just a boring minigame they for some reason brought back, then made it look worse. Winner or Dinner. Another 2v2 where you just run around collecting coins. There's no reason this couldn't have been a free-for-all, and there's absolutely no ingenuity to this one. Honestly, this might be the most uninspired minigame in all of Superstars. It's true that Mario Party 8 didn't have the best selection of minigames. I mean, the Wii was still new, so everybody was still trying to figure out the whole motion controls thing out. That being said, Mario Party 8 definitely had much better games than Winner or Dinner. I mean, there are already 10 coin minigames in Superstars, so this really didn't need to be here. The only saving grace to this game is that everybody just straight up dies at the end. I mean, that's pretty funny. Piranha Pursuit. In this game, the one player wins. The end. <laughs> Jokes aside, this is a very one-sided 1v3 where one player button mashes on a skateboard and the other three players continuously ground pound on the cloud above. You cannot move on top of the cloud, so there's next to no skill to this one beyond just never stopping the flow of rain. Title Toss. Holy cow, they f***ed this game up so bad. And it wasn't even good to begin with. The solo player ground pounds on a boat to make waves, and everyone else has to jump over said waves. So in Mario Party 3, a wave from a full ground pound looked like this. Now here's how a full wave looks in Superstars. Oh, so they just made it easier, right? No, they made it harder, because even though the wave looks smaller now, the hitbox is bigger, so oftentimes, you'll seemingly clear the wave, but then get knocked back by nothing. Even when this game worked, it wasn't that fun. Why is it back? Bogo go go. Another unbalanced 1v3. The solo player is rotating a circular platform to make everybody fall into holes, and the team of three need to survive until the time runs out. The fact that the players can move just as fast as a spinner does not seem fair whatsoever, because like right here, Waluigi never has to change his position. As long as he goes along with the direction I'm spinning, he can stay in this relatively safe spot on the wheel. If there wasn't such a long slowdown and start up between swapping directions, it would probably work fine. But as is, yeah, it doesn't. Cashapult. Two star games. This is a 2v2 coin mini game where players take turns maneuvering midair to collect coins. A sort of neat idea, but incredibly basic. What you see is what you get with this one. And what you get is a 2 out of 5 coin mini game. Tug of War. I cannot believe they brought this one back. I'm sure you all know the story by now, right? Mario Party 1 comes out in 1999, and within the game are several mini games that require you to spin the analog stick as fast as possible. Using your thumb was slow as hell, so people started using the palm of their hand. What ensued were multiple control related injuries to people all across the country. It got so bad, Nintendo had to start issuing out gloves to people who wrote in and complained about it. Mario Party 2 comes out, and it's no coincidence that not a single stick rotating game returned, and we never saw them again. Well, that is until now, where they just flat out have a warning in the how to play screen. Do not play using the palm of your hand. Thank God that's there. I'm sure people aren't going to use the palms of their hand now that there's a warning there. Absolutely fixed. Problem solved. Anyways, all you do is rotate the stick as fast as you can. It's not that great. Maybe they brought this one back because it was iconic or something, but I don't know. I never care for this one. Also, why is this a 1v3? All of the players are rotating their sticks. Wouldn't this just make more sense as a 2v2? Hide and sneak. I used to really like this one as a kid in Mario Party 3, and I still like it okay in that game. So firstly, in this game, the three players choose where to hide, and then the solo player chooses what prop to look under. Here's what they changed. In the original, once you selected a 
prop to hide behind, your character would hover around the area until the curtains dropped. Because of this design choice, you could incorporate some strategy by selecting a prop, having your character run around it, and then as the curtains drop, change your selection to another prop. It wasn't one-sided either, because the solo player could try to gauge what prop you switched to by trying to listen to the duration of footsteps. All of that has been removed in Superstars. The audio mixing is so bad in Superstars, now you can't hear any footsteps. And the positioning of the characters is completely random now, and does not correlate to the amount of time the curtains are closed. Like, check this out. Waluigi is clearly running left, and is basically all the way behind the stump as the curtains close. They quickly open back up, I pick the stump, and he's somehow behind the bush now. There is no way he got to the other side of the stage in that short amount of time. Even if you want to be generous and assume he turned around the millisecond the curtains covered him, it still does not excuse that there are now no footstep sounds whatsoever. So yeah, if you prefer straight up luck, you might still like this one, but I think it's sad how the minigame has been stricken of its skill element. Skewer Scurry. I actually think this is a cool idea for a game, but it's just way too easy for the team of three. This is a 1v3 where one player can decide what direction to send these skewers. The catch is that the skewers will stop when they collide with a block, so you're safe as long as you hide on the other side. The opposing team gets way too much time to react to the skewers, and there is always a small corner of the map the players can chill in, where they can block skewers from all four directions. Paint Misbehaving. I don't know whose job it was to pick the Mario Party 8 minigames, but they hella goofed. This is a 2v2 where you have to shoot the Goombas to your color. Sounds alright, right? The problem is that there are hardly enough Goombas. They all get painted in a matter of seconds, and then you're just turning the tides back and forth until the clock runs out. There just needs to be more Goombas for this minigame to work. Otherwise, it feels like you could half the time on this one, and very little will change. River Raiders. 1v3 coin minigame where one player is driving a boat in front, dragging the other three players behind. The solo player has first say on the coins, but the team of three have an easier time picking up anything that one player missed. It's eh. Also, who looked at this? You know, the original. It was like, ah, gross colors! Get that personality out of there! There you go, that's what I like to see. I sure love me some oil spill water. Quicksand Cash. Another 1v3 coin game where a player in a Bowser suit steers quicksand left or right, and the team of three are on the outside trying to collect coins before they fall in the center. As the team of three, if you fall into the center of the sand pool, you'll sink in. But even beyond that, there's a cutoff towards the middle where if one of the players goes past a specific point in the ring, I think it's around like here, they cannot walk back out. This worked much better than the original since that cutoff was clearly defined thanks to there being contrast between the light and dark sand. So just at a glance, you knew where the safe play area was. In the remake, it's a smoother gradient, which looks nicer, but it makes the cutoff much less defined. Parasol Plummet. Another coin minigame. Why there's so many coin minigames? You're all falling from the sky, and you can open and close your umbrella to slow down or speed up your fall. And just like the other coin games, you're trying to collect as many coins as possible. Not that this game was that great in the original, but I believe it's been further compounded because now, the Hammer Bros don't throw the coins as much as they just gently nudge them. What this ultimately means is that whoever is hugging either the top left or top right is going to be the person getting all the coins. Seriously, the middle of the screen is practically a dead zone in this version. The coins and hammers were much more spread out in the original. Balloon Burst. 2v2. Pump up your balloon of your partner until it pops. First team to pop their balloon wins. There's a certain rhythm to the pumping here, making it more than just a button masher. You want to make sure you're watching the meter below to make sure you're giving full pumps. This is another game I've never been a huge fan of, but the speed of the pump here is significantly slower. Like, seriously look at this. It is night and day how much they slowed this game down. And thank god they slowed so many of these games down because, you know, my friends are always telling me, man, Mario Party is just too fast of a game. They're always saying things like, I can't believe how short of a game Mario Party is. Sarcasm! Spin Doctor. Mario Party 7 had some great dual mini games. This was not one of them. You race your opponent to the end while trying to maneuver through these rotating gates. There's a bit of skill here in terms of looking ahead to see which gates will lead to which routes, but a lot of the time you'll just come to a dead end and you'll need to backtrack. Stick and Spin. So there's a lot of Tetris games in the Mario Party series. Don't you mean puzzle games? What do you call this? A puzzle game? Okay, and what do you call that? Also a puzzle game? And I'm the weirdo for calling this a Tetris game. Until you nerds come up with a different genre name for these block drop color match ass type games. Opposed to games where you actually solve puzzles. I'm gonna keep calling these things Tetris games. Because Stick and Spin is a lot more similar to a game like Tetris than it is a game like Portal. So as I was saying, Mario Party has had a lot of Tetris games. 
And now that I've already made a handful of enemies, I'm gonna help myself to some more by saying I always thought Stick and Spin was one of the weaker Tetris games in the Mario Party series. I mean, for what it's worth, it's better than Triangle Twisters, but I mean, what isn't? It's not a terrible game, but it takes way too long. I played this one against a hard CPU, and it has took nearly 10 minutes for that game to finally end. Nightlight Fright. Everyone's in a dark alleyway for some reason with a chain chomp about to chomp him. Press the A button to stop the chain chomp in his tracks. The player who stops the chain chomp closest to the screen without dying wins. This is a pretty fun game of chicken. Or was. They really messed up the FOV in Superstars, which makes it much harder to tell how close the chain chomp actually is to you. It's really frustrating getting hit in Superstars just because it looked like there was more space between you and the chain chomp. For reference, here's what one yard looks like in Superstars, and here's what one yard looks like in Mario Party 5. Yeah, huge difference. Rocky Road. In this game, you get in a car, get out of the car, punch rocks, and then get back in the car. For a game where you're just beating up a bunch of granite, I give it credit for at least being more creative than Mario Party 2's Destruction Duet, but unlike that game, the kick move is practically useless in Superstars. From my own testing, it seems like it was much more effective to just spam the punch button as fast as you could, which ultimately leads to a game that's pretty mindless. Flash forward. Okay, I swear to god this game just doesn't work. So the Instructions say the winner is the person on the podium front and center. Seems simple enough. You know, just punch the other players to make sure you're the one in the center when the clock hits zero. All right, looking good. I'm center of the frame. Then Luigi is over there straight up falling. Pretty embarrassing for him because- How the hell did Luigi win? Spotlight swim. 1v3 where the team of three needs to shine their spotlights onto the swimming player. If the team can't manage that before the time runs out, the solo player wins. This game used to be very hard for the solo player. A little too hard, actually. So credit where credit is due. I think it's a lot more balanced here in the remake. Castaways. Here's another Mario Party 1 minigame where you have to rotate the stick. Although the rotating is much less egregious in this game, since you only do it when you're reeling your line back. Either way, this is a four-player game where you are quite literally fishing for money. Throw out your line on top of some loot, and reel back in. It is a creative idea for a game, but in both this version and the original. The controls for winding back a line toss feels too finicky. I find myself always targeting the last row because that's the only one I can reliably land. It might just be a me thing, but this is just a eh minigame either way. Hammer Drop. This is a pretty basic coin game, but I like it more than many others for a few reasons. There's no cheesy strategies, there's a lot of player interactions, controls are reliable and everything works the way it should, and if you fall off the platform, you do not come back. Again, it's simple, but not bad. Mecha Marathon. Button mashers are basically a mainstay of Mario Party at this point. A lot of them try to incorporate a gimmick to make it slightly more interesting, and the gimmick for this one is you press two buttons instead of one. Not alternating, mind you. That might have made sense. In this one, you're just supposed to mash both the A button button and the B buttons at the same time to wind up the fly guy. I don't know, this seems really unnecessary. I honestly think I'd enjoy this game more if you just had to mash the A button on its own. Although, it is fun to see how far your fly guy will travel. Dizzy Dancing, a four-player game where you have to collect music notes with messed up controls. The Superstars version of this game has two big changes over the N64 original. One good and one bad. The first change, and the one I like, is now the players are collecting multiple music notes. In the original, it was just one and done, which was still fun, but it made for a very short game. Now for the second change I don't like, in fact I'd argue it flat out ruins this game, is your controls are only reversed each and every time you play this one, which sort of misses the point of the entire game. The point in the original is that you were dizzy and you didn't know how your controls would be messed up. Sometimes they'd just be reversed, but sometimes left would be up. It was different every time, and trying to simultaneously adapt to the controls while also trying to get to the center was the game. But if you know before the game even starts that the only difference is that your controls will be reversed, then what's the point? And this is definitely a case of one step forward, one giant leap back. Cheap Cheap Chase. Here's another four-player button masher where you try to outswim a giant Cheap Cheap. It's just an alright minigame, although they changed the diving, so now you have to pull the stick down to dive under the bombs. It's not the worst change or anything, but I prefer it when it was the B button. Dungeon Dash. 2v2. You gotta sync up your left and right movements with your partner to escape the dungeon. I generally like 2v2 games that require you to actually work alongside your partner, but this one might be a bit too stringent. Whoever gets paired up with the CPU basically just wins, since the computer will always be in sync with the players. If you have a full game of four players, that isn't an issue. Although it's unreasonable to just assume anyone can always get a group of four together anytime they boot up Mario Party. Dark and Crispy. Three-star games. This is a Bowser game where you have to avoid Bowser in a dark pit until the time
timer hit zero. They made this one harder by making Bowser's charge attack more frequent, which is a good change. Unfortunately, it's still way too easy. Sure, the pit might be quote unquote dark, but you can always see where Bowser is, so why even bother? Tackle takedown, a 1v3 where the solo player needs to bring the football to the end zone without getting tackled. As a game, I like this one a lot. The problem is that it ends in like five seconds. It's not even an exaggeration, check this out. Joke's on you, that wasn't even 5 seconds. It was like 2. Pokey Pummel, 4 player button measure, and an alright one at that. This one has been recreated pretty faithfully. In fact, I think this remake has better art direction than the original. Pokey is looking hella fine. I wish every hammer swing correlated with one of the spike balls being knocked off, but that's one hell of a nitpick. And that's not how the original was anyway. Overall, this is pretty good. Blockstar, a Tetris game, but I don't know, I'm a bit indifferent to this one. You gotta make color matches by grabbing blocks and then throwing them up to the top of the board. It's an interesting idea, but it's not as addictive as some of the other Tetris games we've seen. Also, I went up against a hard CPU without having any idea what I was doing, and won by basically mashing the A button at the bottom of the screen. So I don't know. Interpret that however you want. Goal is a 1v3 where the team of three kicks soccer balls into the goal, and the solo player has to try to block them all. The hitbox for the solo player used to be huge in the original. In Mario Party 4, it was really easy to win as a goalie. In a Superstars remake, the teams are a lot more balanced, which makes the game much better. Coconut Kong, 1v3. Team of three ground pound on the trees above to try to drop coconuts on the player below. The solo player wins if they could dodge all the coconuts until a time hit zero. The coconut hitbox can be a little wonky at times, but otherwise this is identical to the original. Not bad, although it might be a little easier for the solo player. Storm Chasers. Stay under the storm cloud to water your piranha plant. Player who is under the cloud for the longest amount of time wins. The movement in this version is noticeably faster. The characters slide around a lot less, which I personally think is a good change. Sneak and Snore. Alright, here's one I've always been indifferent to. Essentially the game is red light, green light, where you only want to move in the chain chomp of sleeping. First player to escape wins. The problem I've always had of this one, even in the original, is that you do not hide in the barrel the second you release a stick. There is a bit of a delay to it. I don't even mind the delay though. If there was a set duration for the delay anytime you let go of the stick, that'd be fine. But it's not like that. Basically, the slower you're moving, the faster it is to hide in your barrel. And it's weird because it's actually faster the first slow down, and then let go of the stick, opposed to just letting go entirely. I don't think Superstars even tells you this bit of information, although this quirk is definitely still in the remake. And the computers are really good at taking advantage of it. I think this game would be a lot better if it was just flat out based on when you let go of the stick, and it didn't have any of the slow down technique. But that's just me. Dinger Derby. Hit baseballs the game. The player who hits the most baseballs by the end is the winner. The enjoyment factor of this game can change greatly depending on the amount of latency your TV has. The faster the ball, the slower the windup, but even that aside, this game is much easier in 5 when played on a CRT. I know that isn't Mario Party Superstar's fault, it's just weird that they would bring this one back at all given the Switch itself is known for having built-in lag. Manner of Escape. Escape to the bottom of the mansion by going through doors. One door on each floor will send you down to the next, and you keep finding said door until you escape. You know that stage in Fall Guys? Remember that game? Where you have to jump for the walls but only some are breakable? Manner of Escape is basically that in the sense that once a player finds the right door, everybody else is just going to go in directly after that player. So every player is basically neck and neck until the final floor where it actually matters. And that's kind of my issue with the game. Much like that Fall Guys level. The only way to completely prevent this is just to be insanely lucky and get the right door one after another. So, you know, just be good at luck. So World. Jump your thumb between A, B, Y, and X in that order to perform 360s on your snowboard. Player who pulls off the biggest rotation wins. This game was great with the GameCube controller, mostly because it was the only controller where a circular movement was challenging due to the layout of the face buttons. It's a lot easier in Superstars where the primary Switch controllers have a diamond button layout. The biggest problem now is that the Switch supports tons of different controllers. Depending on the controller you use, you might be at a severe disadvantage. It seems unfair to penalize a player just because they're using a pro controller, which has bigger, more spread out buttons, opposed to Joy-Cons, where the buttons are so small and close, you can essentially just roll your thumb in a circular motion. And if you are using a GameCube controller through the adapter, you can basically forget about winning if you're up against someone with Joy-Cons. I mean, unless you're really good at doing this garbage. It might seem like Superstars is blameless in this situation, but they could have just put in another minigame from Mario Party 6 in Snow World's place. That game where you outrun that Indiana Jones-ass bowler was pretty cool, could have brought that one back. Cake Factory. 2v2 where you build as many cakes as you can before the timer runs out. Bottom player sets down the base, player above tops it off of a strawberry. I really like this one how it originally was in Mario Party 2. In Super Stars, it's alright, but it does control worse. In the original, you held down the button to grab the cake, and then let it go to let go of the cake. In Super Stars, you tap the button to pick it up, and then press it again to let go. Might seem small, but the original control scheme felt more natural. Also, the music got a huge downgrade. So here's the original. <laughs> Thank you.
That's f***ing hilarious. I love it. Now here's the new one. Why? I'm sorry, was the original just too goofy for... What's the game again? Mario Party? Better get those clown horns out of there. Don't want those players to be laughing during a party game after all. Etch and catch. Move your giant crayon to circle toad heads with your partner. First team to encompass five toad heads wins. I had a friend watching me play this and he said, and I quote, This is the worst minigame I've ever seen. Truly the words of someone who hasn't seen that Mario Party 8 minigame where you flip that monkey. I f***ing hate that game. Still don't know why he said that. This isn't the greatest game or anything, but there's a lot of bullshit in the Mario Party series to make such a blanket statement like that. Pit Boss. Bowser game where you're avoiding spike balls in a pit. You cannot jump in this one, and a bit of the game is just waiting around while you wait for the balls to slow down. But I do enjoy the difficulty here. Certainly a lot harder than that game where he's streaking in the dark. X-Ray Payday. A coin game, and a really creative one at that. Both coins and hazards are coming down a conveyor belt. The X-Ray ahead will show what's in the box. So you have to remember what was in each box three stops down the line. It's a really easy game, which is why I don't have it ranked too high, but this one deserves props for ingenuity alone. Tipsy Tourney. I swear I'm the only person on Earth who thinks this is a just okay minigame. Everyone has their own weight-sensitive puzzle board with a bunch of crackers hiding a picture. You tilt the board so that way a mobile shell will slide over the saltines and uncover the picture. First person to clear their board wins. It is interesting, but I always thought this one was a bit slow. And now it's even slower because Superstars makes you wait until everybody has finished. Why? So the game can determine who gets three or two coins? Who cares? When the first person finishes, just give second and third place to whoever is second and third at that moment in time. Why is Nintendo so insistent on elongating Mario Party? Beyond the slow nature of the game, a gripe I have is that it's the same experience every time. Since there isn't any variability or player interaction, you could literally record your inputs in good old tool-assisted speedrun fashion and get the same results every time. Even most of the other minigames where you never directly interact with each other are always slightly different each time. Sneak and Snore has the chomp wake up at different intervals, Chip Shot Challenge has different hole locations and layouts, Dinger Derby has different throwing patterns, you get the idea. The only variety this game has is the three different patterns behind the tiles, but that doesn't change the gameplay. This might be a fan favorite, but this is my list and I'm giving it a three. Look away, the game where you look away, from the player on the top. If you look the same direction as the solo player, you're out, and if all the players on the team of three go out, the solo player wins. Everything is mostly the same here in the remake. I think the game is funnier when the cast was just a bunch of disembodied heads, but that's a minor grape. Perfectly fine game. Bounce and Trounce. This is a four-player free-for-all where you are all on pogo stick yoga ball things trying to knock each other off the platform. I've always enjoyed this one, although it doesn't play quite the way it used to. I can't exactly put a finger on what they changed, but all I can say is the controls felt more solid in the original. And I swear this isn't nostalgia, I played them back to back. Whatever the change is, making the drop shadows barely visible didn't help. Bowser's Big Blast, one of the classics. This is an example of luck done right. I mean, it's still luck, but if you're gonna base your game off pressing a switch and hoping the god of giant bomb behind you doesn't blow up, you better make that game suspenseful as all hell. And that is something Bowser's Big Blast executes perfectly. There is one change I don't like in the remake. They made the game take longer. After every button press, there's a super long pause. Don't get me wrong, the long pauses can make things feel suspenseful for sure, but this was executed better in the original where only very rarely would there be a long pause between the button press and a result. The effect is totally diminished when the game is pausing for like 3 seconds each and every time the button is pushed. Still, if you're making a Mario party best of, it's kind of hard to not include this one. Honeycomb Mavic, a deceptively strategic last man standing game where you want to take the fruit, but you don't want to be the player stuck at the beehive. Get the beehive and you're out. There's both strategy and luck to this game when it comes to guessing how many fruits will be taken when the other players go. You can never guarantee anything until it's just you and one other remaining. I always thought this game took too long in Mario Party 2, but since many of the mini games have been slowed down in Superstars already, the playtime here isn't too dissimilar to many of these other remade games, which is sort of an unintentional oof. A minor critique. The old version of this game had coins alongside the fruits, which I think made the game better because sometimes players wouldn't always make the most logical move if it meant grabbing a few more coins. It made things less predictable, and in my opinion, more fun. Boulder Ball, a 1v3 where a solo player is rolling rocks down a hill to prevent the team of three from getting to the top. If the solo player can keep the team at bay until the timer hits zero, they win. The climb up the mountain was made a bit shorter in the remake, although I wouldn't necessarily call that a bad change. This is a fun game for either side. Trapeze Artists. Everybody has control of a cage that can drop at any time.
time. The goal is to try to trap as many Goombas as possible under your cage. Gold Goombas are worth three, and whoever scored the most points of their drop is the winner. I really, really wish this game had two cage drops, because depending on the Goomba spawn locations, you can be put at an inherent disadvantage, which can feel especially bad when you only get one go. The sense that this game can be unfair is a fair critique. I don't know though. If people will allow a bit of lenience towards luck-based games, I think something like Trapeze Artist deserves a bit of lenience too. Unfair or not at times. It's still fun to capture a large group of Goombas. You don't always know who will win. It's not complete luck. It can be fun, and it's short. Even though I'm not a huge fan. I gotta be honest, I don't get people who talk like this is one of the absolute worst minigames. Money Belts. Here is the final coin game. Thank God. This is a 1v3 where the player on the top conveyor belt has first serving to all the coins coming out, but a shorter conveyor. Whereas a team of three have a big conveyor, and obviously more people, making it easier for them to catch anything the solo player misses. As far as coin games go, I really like this one. That moment when the very best coin minigame isn't even halfway through the list. Probably a sign that there shouldn't be 10 of them in a single Mario Party! Catch you later. Letters fall from the sky and you have to collect them and bring them to Shy Guy. Love letters, the pink ones, are worth three points. Player of the most points at the end is the winner. This is a really simple game, but it's all the small touches that make it fun. It has a frantic energy to it, and I like how the Shy Guy can only accept one letter at a time, so sometimes you have to wait your turn. Rock and Raceway. Alternate L and R button presses to rock your wooden horse down a horse track. You have a stamina meter, so if you rock too much, you'll spin out. There are also carrot tokens that give you infinite stamina, but you need to time when you collect them because every few frames they change to a, I don't know, grapes or some shit that make you spin out. First player to cross the finish line wins. As far as button mashing games go, this is one of the best since there is actual strategy here. If you mindlessly mash L and R without paying attention, you're not going to win. While this isn't my favorite game, it is one I have a lot of respect for. It's very well done. Minus the new sound design where now you have to listen to all the characters constantly grunting. <laughs> really annoying. Superstars did this to a lot of minigames, so this won't be the last you'll hear about it. Monty's Revenge. On to the 4-star games. This is an interesting one. It basically plays like a reverse whack-a-mole where you're the mole not trying to get hit, and the Monty moles are running around trying to hit everyone with hammers. As long as you have your head popped out, you're clocking up your timer. Although, you will have to change what hole you're hiding in whenever you're about to get hit. Player with the most time on their timer by the end is the winner. As I said, this is a really interesting minigame. A fun game to play, and it definitely gets some brownie points for being clever. The final countdown. There's there's a good number of minigames where you're trying to knock the other players off the platform in a good old free-for-all fashion, so if you're going to roll with this idea, you need to have a good catch. And the final countdown absolutely does. The catch is that every platform has a decreasing number on it. When that number hits zero, that platform will break open and anyone on top will fall through. This makes for a battle arena that is constantly changing. No one spot is ever truly safe, which works great for a minigame like this. What goes up? Platform on paratroop is to climb upwards. Whoever is the highest when the time runs out wins. The cool thing about Mario Party 6 in particular is that a good number of the minigames had an alternate version depending on whether you're playing at day or night. Whether it was day or night on the board, to clarify. There is a board in Superstars of a day and night cycle, said board being Horrorland. Unfortunately, the night version of this game is not here. It's a shame too, because in the night version, you're trying to fall as far as you can. Including that version would have made for a more varied list considering our next game is Leaf Leap, which is another game where you platform as high as you can before the timer runs out. The two games do play differently enough, and I think I prefer this version over what goes up but yeah. Having the night version of the last game would have been the move if they were going to include two games of identical objectives. Rapid River Race. Four player race to the finish. The A button speeds up your boat to the next tier, and the analog stick moves you left or right. This is a really fun one, but as always, I need to comment on something. So this game was originally in Mario Party 10, which means you use the Wii's D-pad to switch lanes. Which, when playing a game where you're only shifting between three lanes with no variability in between, that works a lot better than the analog stick. In Superstars, the game doesn't let you use any Thing but the stick. I mean, ideally this game would use the L and R buttons to change lanes. I know that's not how the original was, but one, using the stick is not how the original was anyway, and two, they already changed the controls of so many games in Superstars, so I don't think anyone would have minded if they changed it in a way that made sense. Bobsled Run. Team up with another player for a race. Cooperate with your partner so you don't fall off the edge. Fall, and you lose the race. Sorry, I was reading the wiki on that one. Okay, <laughs> Listen, you try describing a bunch of minigames one after another. It's a lot, okay? Just give me this one. Anyways, this has always been a fan favorite, but the controls aren't as gradual in this version. What I mean by that is that in the original, the turning had a bit more build-up to it. It felt a lot more natural and made it easier to steer given both players are in charge of that. In the remake, if both players are holding the same direction, it like immediately turns. Feels janky. Not that it ruins the game or anything. This is still one of the best 2v2s. Sky Pilots. A 2v2 where you fly a Sky Pilots. I... <laughs> 
Look, it's fun, okay? It's more fun to see her, but it's good. And it was recreated very faithfully. Good job, Nintendo! Dude, why is there 100 games? TikTok Hop, a dual game where you try to outlast your opponent by jumping over a jagged longhand. There's a lot of variability to this one, since after a certain number of jumps, the shorthand will start moving too. And then after that, both of the short and long hands will start changing directions. It's crazy. Something that has always bothered me about TikTok Hop is that the player on the outer edge of the hand has the easier jumps timing-wise. I mean, just inherently due to the laws of centrifugal force. The outer end of the jagged hand is moving faster, making it less likely to screw up by making a jump too early. It's just like when you're playing a rhythm game and think that making notes slower would make it easier, but it doesn't. Because then they're all just like scrunched up, you know? Is anyone getting me on this? Chip shot challenge. You try to sink a golf ball in a single swing. Person to sink it or get closest wins. One of my absolute favorites in Mario Party 3, but look, you know what I'm gonna say. Problems in Superstars are one, instead of a 3D model to give you an idea of your trajectory, it's now like they slapped a PNG onto the screen. Not sure what was wrong with the model. The bigger problem is this. Check this out. You saw that, right? Literally aimed right, goes left. Or how about this one? Hits it way off to the right, practically goes straight. The aiming is all sorts of f now, but I found out. It's mostly consistent when you hit the ball. It's just the AI that is super bugged out. That seems like one hell of an oversight if it was actually something I missed. My only guess was maybe they made the computer shot random so that way you couldn't base your shot off what you saw the computer do. But isn't that the point of the game? In Superstars, they added this roulette thing to decide who swings first. And why else would you add that? Other than to try to hide the fact that whoever swings first is at a clear disadvantage. If this was changed to prevent someone from gauging their shot off of what they saw a computer do, then why not just make this game split screen and have everybody swing at the same time? You fix the problem and also speed up the game. Two birds, one stone. Pizza, pizza. Button mash to eat a giant pizza of your partner. Team that eats the most pizza wins. In the original version of this game, the crust slowed you way down, which was cool because it added a bit of strategy. Not much, but you know. You wanted to eat the crust last since it took significantly longer. In Superstars, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference between how fast you can eat the cheese and the crust, if there even is one at all. Regardless, this is a funny and inspired way to tackle a 2v2 button masher. In fact, this is probably the best button mashing 2v2 in the series. Actually, no, I lied. I just remembered there's one better on this very list. Forget what I said. What'd I say? Reverse a bomb. This is a weird one, he said as he just got done talking about a giant pizza game. So it's a 2v2 where there's all these bombs that will walk either left or right on these lanes. If the bomb is coming to your side of the board, you press the button in front of you to flip it back to the other direction. If too many bombs make it to your side, the other team wins. You're constantly running back and forth hitting all these buttons like mad trying to redirect all these guys. It's super crazy. I love it. Burn style. This is like TikTok hop except more balanced because you can move to the outer edge if that makes it easier for you. And also it's a 2v2 for some reason. I'm starting to notice there's a bit of overlap on a handful of these picks. Like we didn't need both TikTok hop and this. You could have just replaced it with something else. Motor rooter. Dual game where you're racing against an opponent in a shell bumper car thing. Anytime you pass over a speed boost, your top speed increases. And if you hit electricity, it resets. First player to cross the goal wins. The controls can be sort of unwieldy in that sonic loop way sometimes. You know, when you're holding right to go up a loop and then halfway through the loop, it's like, do you hold left now or? Motor rooter is similar because if you're holding left at the bottom, you will go clockwise. And then if you let go at the top and then start holding left again, you'll start moving counterclockwise. There's really not much to could have done about this. And if anything, it's a learning curve that can be overcome. Bombs away. All players try to stay on a wobbling piece of land all the while trying to dodge cans being shot at them from a distance. Last player standing wins. Fun game, but I have to ask, why the hell do they keep using the Mario Party 1 version of this game when the Mario Party 2 version, I'd argue, is objectively better? Because they also use this version in the top 100 for 3DS as well. Especially with how weird the camera angle and drop shadows can be, it's sometimes hard to tell which cannonballs are going to hit the platform and which ones will hit the water. In Mario Party 2, cannonballs almost always hit the water, but missiles always hit the platform. You might think this makes it easier, but to counter this, there are generally more missiles to keep that challenge intact. Not to mention, the Mario Party 2 version of this game ends with a giant Bowser bomb getting shot at the platform as a final f*** you. You know, just saying. No reason to use the Mario Party 1 version. Vine with me. Swing on vines to reach the end before your opponent. There's just one button. Jump. So it's all about timing. Kinda seems like you could jump every swing without thinking about it, because if you fall, by the time you respawn, the vine is in a position for you to make a successful leap anyway. Basically, I wish the penalty for falling was a bit more of a setback. Great game, though. Many games like this that have a bit of a rhythm to them are always fun to play. Handcar Havoc. Here's that other 2v2 button masher you ordered, sir. 
me? Remember when I said I forgot another 2v2 button masher? Yeah, me neither. But this is it if I did say that. You and your partner have to mash A to speed your hand car along the tracks. And anytime there's a turn, you need to lean into it so the hand car doesn't tip over and fall off the tracks. One goof and you're out. This minigame is in both Mario Parties 1 and 2. And in my opinion, this is the only minigame that has a better version in Mario Party 1. There's a common misconception among people who aren't super familiar with the first two titles that most of the minigames in Mario Party 2 are just copy and pasted from Mario Party 1. But that isn't exactly true. Firstly, the number of returning games in 2 from 1 is less than a third. And secondly, every single minigame was changed in some way. Sometimes just visually. But in the case of Handcar Havoc, they made it so the handcar could not fall off the track in Mario Party 2, which made the whole leaning mechanic less important. I prefer this original version because it takes less focus off the button mashing and puts a good deal of the player's attention to the steering. A really solid 2v2. Mass Meteor. Remember that time somebody bet me I couldn't beat Mass Meteor against a master CPU? And then I did? And then he left the stream? Good times. Mass Meteor is a dual minigame where you have to avoid asteroids until the end. First player to cross finish wins. This is a fun game, but the way the movement works is really weird. Hypothetically speaking, if both players hit the same number of asteroids, they will get a tie every single time. From there, the winner will just be whoever was hugging the right of the screen after passing the asteroid field. And if both players are doing that, I don't know. I guess the game randomly decides on a winner? Again, the movement almost has like a tier system in place. It's really weird. Makes me wonder if the game would work better if the camera just followed the player instead of being stuck to a static scroll speed. It'd make for a more dynamic race if nothing else. Messy memory. There's a bunch of items on a pair of bookshelves, and you need to remember the order until Toad has a schizo attack and f***s everything up for seemingly no reason. Make a memory of where everything was and put it all back on the shelves. The player who reorganized the shelf closest to the original setup wins. It's a basic memory game, but I think this is a fun one. It's probably a little too easy though. With only 10 items, it's very effortless to get a perfect score every time. Especially since not every item gets knocked off the shelf. Even still, I have a bias towards any game that makes you use your brain for even half a second. Shy Guy says, here's a classic. Shy Guy will hold either a red or white flag, and then you have to hold up the same color. It starts simple enough, but after a while, not only will it get faster, but Shy Guy will try to juke the players out by holding up multiple flags at once. One mistake and you're out. Last player standing wins. This is another minigame they slowed down for some reason. They do the same thing they do in the remake of Bowser's Big Blast, where there's abnormally long pauses between flag raises. In Bowser's Big Blast, it at least made sense to add pauses because it could add to the suspense. But in Shy Guy Says, it's not like the first player to raise their flag wins, if anything. Because of how Shy Guy can mess with the players, this is a game where you do not want to respond to the first thing you see. In other words, STOP SLOWING ALL THE GAMES DOWN, NINTENDO! The N64 is notoriously slow, and you're somehow outdoing that. Bumper balloon cars. Players drive RC cars with spikes on the front and a balloon in the back. Pop the balloons of the other players while protecting your own. Last player standing wins. This is a 5 out of 5 for me in Mario Party 2, but this is yet again another minigame they slowed down. The cars move considerably slower, which makes the movements less twitchy, but that twitchiness and frantic energy is what made the original so fun. Not to mention the hitboxes for the balloons are way bigger than superstars, which is not a good thing because you can now pop the balloons by passing a player on the side. Still a ton of fun, but why do they keep doing this? Beach Volley Folly. It's volleyball. As a minigame. I had this one ranked way lower because I wasn't a fan of the controls. All of the actions are context sensitive. So for example, you can only jump when the ball is on your side of the net. And even then, you still can't jump unless the ball is coming at you. I don't know, it's hard to explain and that's why I wasn't big on it. I got some footage with my cousin though who actually plays volleyball and he loves this shit. He basically said that even though all of the moves are context sensitive, the game doesn't let you do certain actions if it wouldn't make sense in a real game of volleyball. Long story short, it is a video game, so I would like to play it like one, but I gotta at least give it credit for accuracy. I mean, as accurate as a sports game in a Mario Party can get anyway. Paths of Peril. Players run on a narrow path to the end. First player to reach the flag wins. You need to balance both speed and precision for this game. On the more winding paths, sometimes playing it safe can win you the game. Easy to understand and fun to play. Love this one. Crazy Cutters, another classic. Chisel the outline of a Mario enemy as accurately as possible with your jackhammer. Player with the most accurate cut wins. They made the shapes you have to outline more complicated, which I actually don't like because on the Chain Shop outline, for example, your character can cover the line you need to trace, and especially if you pick someone like Donkey Kong, this can be a serious problem. I mean, the challenge of the game should be trying to be precise, not seeing in general. Squared Away, an incredibly funny 1v3 where the solo player is a quick tiny cube trying to run away from the team of three, who are 
four giant slow cubes. The team of three is trying to crush the solo player, and the solo player is trying to outlast the timer. I know I've been that guy for the duration of this video, but as fun as this game still is, they made a lot of shortcomings. They removed the ending scene for one. Whoever lost the game in the original will get stamped out by a bunch of flomps. Just a funny little gag, but it gave this minigame a lot of personality. The bigger change is that the sound design is not nearly as good. In Superstars, because of the audio mixing, you can barely hear the sounds of the cubes rotating. And now the characters make annoying grunts every time they move, which is now for some reason the most prominent sound in the whole minigame. The old audio mixing conveys the situation much better. The sounds that are front and center is the goofy sounding music, the high pitched clinking of the tiny cube, and the giant thuds of the bigger cubes. Not only is the impending doom for the tiny cube more clear, it's just a much funnier minigame because of it. Also in the original, the 8 bit design on the board was random each time you loaded the game. So basically, the Superstars version is worse in every regard. But even with the oversights, this is still one of the funniest 1v3s. Later, Skater. Ice skate around the rink as fast as you can. Ice NASCAR. First player to do five laps wins. Fun game. Great sense of speed, why isn't the player who starts at the top position slightly back like in a track and field race? I mean, the strat for this game is to hug the center, and it's not like there's that much of a penalty for turning too sharp into the center, so whoever starts closest to the center is getting a slight advantage. Not a huge deal, but it does seem like an oversight given this game does keep track of your best time. Dungeon Duos. Dude, I desperately wish I could just slap this in the number one spot and call it a day. This is hands down my favorite minigame ever. So then, why isn't it number one here? Oh! Oh boy, let me tell you about it. First off, quick explanation. Dungeon Duos is a 2v2 where you and a partner try to escape a dungeon by cooperating through a gauntlet of several tasks. The first part is you button mashing on levers to let your partner through the gates. The second part has one player moving a platform with another lever, while the other player platforms across. Then of course said player gets across the pit and helps her partner from the other side. Then it's onto the pipes where you have to find the one pipe that brings you to the next room. Finally, the game is capped off of a segment where you and your partner pump up the air balloon as fast as possible. This is everything that you want in a single Mario Party minigame. Genuine cooperation, button mashing, platforming, rhythm, and just a pinch of luck to make things interesting. The absolute best 2v2 they ever did. Too bad they had a it up! Starting with the gates, button mashing gates takes nearly twice as long to open in the remake. It slows the game down significantly. Platforming? This is where they probably f***ed up the worst. Not only is the jumping significantly more floaty, they did that crash remaster thing where all the hitboxes are capsule shaped. You know, rounded on the bottom so it's super easy to slip off smaller platforms. Such as the ones in Dungeon Duos. Also the fact that the lighting is so bad that you can barely even see your drop shadow doesn't help. And lastly, there was a clear rhythm to the pumping in forward that is not here in Superstars. The only section of this game they didn't goof is the pipes, and that's probably just because they couldn't find a way to f*** it up. And it's not just me. Both my cousin and I were all like, okay, maybe we're just being nostalgic. Maybe Dungeon Duos and Mario Party 4 wasn't actually that good. Hell no! We played both versions back to back, and immediately picked up the Mario Party 4 version like we had just played it yesterday. This game is still just as fast, snappy, and responsive as I remembered it in the original. We got to the platforming part and and didn't make any mistakes. This is still a 4 out of 5 because it's such a cool minigame, but it's times like this I'm reminded that the company that develops Mario Party now is not the company that did these, but instead the company that did these. Tread carefully. Hey guys, Lee Tank Scott here, YouTube extraordinaire. This is a free-for-all from Mario Party 2 where the goal is to be the last tank standing. You got a straight shot with unlimited range and a lob that could go over pipes. One of my absolute favorites from 2. But get this, you're not even gonna believe it. They made an oversight in the remake! Oh my god! For whatever reason, the cannon on the tank has its own hitbox and can get stuck on the pipes. And given how hugging pipes and using lob shots are a big strategic part of this game, this isn't that rare of an occurrence. Should I just rename this video to Nitpicky Guy tells you how most of the remade games in Superstars aren't as good anymore? I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. I'm just really passionate about the Mario Party series. By the way, they changed the name? It used to be called Shellshocked, which, come on. Wait way cooler name. I mean, tread carefully? What kind of name is that? Hot Rope Jump. It's a jump rope with fire because the normal jump rope wasn't dangerous enough. This is a crowd pleaser. Simple concept, but appropriate for the Mario universe. The Superstars version of this game is much easier. In Mario Parties 1 and 2, the higher you jump, the longer of a recovery period you have before you can jump again.
again. In Superstars, no matter how high you jump, you can always jump again nearly the second you touch the ground. I'm a fan of the old style, but I understand the change if they thought maybe it was too unforgiving. Mushroom Mix-Up. Five-star games. Gotta be honest, I'm really indifferent to this one. Not the original, of course. Mushroom Mix-Up and Hexagon Heat are my favorite minigames from Mario Parties 1 and 2, respectively. They catch everyone up to speed. This is a free-for-all where Toad will raise a color flag, and all the mushrooms that are not that color will sink into the water. This will continue indefinitely until there's just one player remaining. Fantastic game, but here's what they changed. In the original, jumping on someone's head was a death sentence. Whenever you landed on someone's head, you would continue to move in the direction you held until you landed. I liked this, because in Mario Parties 1 and 2, there was a much bigger emphasis on who got to the colored tile first. I mean, that seems like the point of the game if you ask me. So having some sort of punishment for making it late only seems fair. Not to mention, it speeds up the game since it's easier to die. In Superstars, you can jump on someone's head for as long as you want, since you only move after bouncing if you are actively holding a direction. Even worse, is this change makes ground pounding a dominant strategy since there's little to no risk of doing it now. So not only are you not punished for being late to a tile, I'd argue it's sometimes better to be late since now, if someone is already on a tile and you're jumping to it, that's a perfect opportunity to ground pound a player and screw them up. So now the whole game is just comprised of everybody ground pounding each other. It's super obnoxious. Ground pounding with terrible hitboxes, mind you. Like, what the f*** was this? Not only is it obnoxious, but between the constant ground pounding and the minimal penalty for making it to a mushroom late, this game now takes twice as long as it used to. Also, I notice if you get the mushrooms to fall fast enough, in this version, they can move down faster than your character falls. So if things become fast enough, the mushrooms will move from underneath you, and you won't even get a chance to jump. That's not a joke. Watch this footage. I pressed A to jump, and instead of jumping, it made me ground pound because the platforms moved from under me too fast. This happened more than once, by the way. It's impressive then, that even after all those changes, I'm still giving Mushroom Mix Up a 5 out of 5. The reason being that unlike something like Dungeon Duos, that actively frustrates me. Mushroom Mix Up still has great pacing to it, and things only start to get dicey when the game starts getting too fast, which understandably isn't going to be every play session. Bumper Balls. I am not the biggest fan of Bumper Balls. It's a 3, maybe 4 star game in Mario Party's 1 and 2, but credit where credit is due, this is one of the few games that's actually better in Superstars. This game is typically defined by its tie games. I swear more than half of my games I've seen in the original ends in a 1v1 stalemate. In Superstars, it feels like you have less control over the ball, which in this case, is actually a good thing since games end now. Listen, I'm willing to give credit where credit is due, and credit is certainly due on this one. Picking Panic. 2v2 where you pass cherries between you and your partner to a basket as many times as possible. Team to basket the most cherries wins. The cool thing about this game is that the number of cherries will dictate the weight of them. So single cherries you can throw super far, whereas triple cherries require you to be up close and personal with your partner. Cherries get thrown way farther in this remake, which definitely makes it easier, but it's still a fun game that has a fun rhythm to it. Trace Race. Trace the line of your giant Crayola. Player with the most accurate trace wins. Yes, that's really it, and I don't care. I love this game. There is a minor issue where it seems like certain controllers are at a bigger advantage due to having better sticks. I mean, Joy-Con sticks. Oof. Not great. But I'd say that point is more negligible here than, say, a button measure. Fantastic game. And recreated very well. Roll Call. I see this game get a lots of hate, but screw it. This is my list, and to me, it's a 5 out of 5. Also, this is another game they improved. The number of entities on average is generally higher, they're smaller on the screen, and in case of the bomb bomb variant, the bombs are so small they can fully hide behind the boxes for a brief moment, something they could not do in the original. This game is hard to get an exact number, and it's better off for it. Oh yeah, by the way, if you couldn't already gather, this is a game where you count the number of characters that are on the map, and then make your closest guess. Sure, you could simplify it by saying it's just counting, but a lot of Mario Party games are just pressing a single button as fast as you can. When it comes to Mario Party, you can't reasonably use a minigame simplicity as its shortcoming when a minigame being simple is kind of the point of Mario Party. Tube it or lose it. You ever just want to kill people on an inner tube? Anyway, this is a 1v3 game where a player in a giant spike tube has to chase down and pop the team of three riding inflatable tubes. If any one of the three can pass the finish line without popping, they win. This is another game that has been translated well from its original rendition to Superstars. Funny, fast, and easy to understand. Speed Hockey. It's Pong. It's good. Facelift. So a Bowser head gets all... Aah! 
and it's up to you to deform the Bowser head on your screen to match what you see in the middle. Player with the closest face wins. The Mario Party 2 version of this game had all the faces from all the playable characters, but maybe they didn't want to do that since, you know, 10 character heads is a lot more work than one Bowser. That aside, facelift is way harder in this version because of how imprecise the stick is. You wouldn't expect it, but it really is hard to move here. Now it feels like there needs to be a button that you can hold to gradually move a point, which is something I definitely felt I never needed in the original. Like seriously, look how fast your hand cursor moves in this version. Now compare that to facelift on the 64. You gotta love how in one of the instances where Nintendo actually sped something up is when they were remaking a game about precision. I still love this game, hence the 5. But when you slap touchy controls onto an analog stick that is already notorious for issues, the challenge of the game is suddenly more about the controls than the objective. Build Blasters. Everyone is on rotating platforms of cannons. Time your button presses to immediately stop and shoot. Last player standing wins. Unlike the original, you can use your cannon to wall yourself off from oncoming bolts, which I think is a very smart change. Because now it's not just about correctly aiming, it's about defending now too, since you can stop your cannon to position it in the line of a bullet. This was already a solid game, and that seemingly small change makes it that much better. Ice Ring Crisk. Everyone's gonna die. And also, this is a game where you're dodging smiley shells. Last player standing wins. I like the simplicity here, and it can be genuinely challenging. GG. Slot Car Derby. I cannot believe the amount of slander this game gets online. Quick explanation. It's a slot car race. Push the stick to accelerate, and if you're going too fast on turns, you'll spin out. First player to cross the finish line wins. Okay, first of all, I swear most people don't even understand how to play this game. It's awful. It's awful! It makes no f***ing sense. It's really simple. Your speed is always listed on the screen. And if it says max when you race over a strip with his red and white caution line, you spin out. So the trick is to go max speed on the straights and then slow down on the turns. It's all about timing, really. The second complaint I hear is that the game should just use the A button instead of the stick. And when people say that, it makes me wonder if they've ever played of slot cars in real life. In most real slot car sets, the speed of the slot car is not binary. You can hold the trigger on the remote halfway to only speed up the car slightly. And keep in mind, Mario Party Slot Car Derby minigame premiered on the N64. The only input on that controller that was analog was the stick itself. If the game was on the GameCube, I can guarantee they would have used the GameCube's pressure-sensitive triggers instead. The point is, they decided to implement the controls in this way because especially in a game where you are carefully monitoring your speed, having the ability to only partially accelerate on turns is invaluable, something that would not be possible on a button without pressure sensitivity. Anyways, I've always loved the timing-based nature of this game. It's a poor, misunderstood child. Ice hockey. Unlike speed hockey, ice hockey is actually hockey and not just, you know, pong. It's a ton of fun. I love the energy and strategy here. My only critique is I think the one minute is way too short. I mean, Mario Party 5 lets you set the amount of time you want to play, so why not Superstars? Then I later found out you can set the time in Superstars, but you can't do it in free play. You can only do it in the sports and puzzles section. What? Okay, you better get comfortable because I'm about to rant. I mean, this is so unintuitive. And Nintendo really deserves to be criticized for handling all this so sloppily. The two modes I expect every Mario Party to have for minigames is a free play mode and a tournament mode where the game keeps shuffling minigames until somebody has won a set amount of them. And I expect this because one, bare minimum you could possibly do with minigame modes, and two, every Mario Party made by Hudson Soft has had these, with the only exception being the first Mario Party where they awkwardly mix the free play and tournament mode together. Superstars at least has free play? Oh wow, how very impressive. The mode every Mario Party has had, but there's no dedicated tournament mode. And in what I can only guess is an attempt to make this game seem like it has more content than it truly does. They even split up the options you would expect in free play into another mode. So you got this minigame puzzle, right? Wow, look at all these modes. Uh, lies. All of it lies. So free play mode is free play, self-explanatory. But not all the options for each game is there. Want to play volleyball to more than seven points? Too bad. Want to play ice hockey for longer than a minute? Too bad. If you want to change these settings, you have to exit out of free play, scroll over to the sports and puzzles, and play those games in that mode. What the f were they thinking? All this is, is just another free play mode except with a smaller selection of games. I mean, look at this. Even the menu where you pick the game is exactly the same as free play except with more options. Would it really have killed them to make these options on free play instead of making an entirely separate mode? You have to select just if you want to change the time limit. Some games don't even have more options here than they do in free play mode anyway. Games like Blockstar and Stick and Spin don't have any additional options. You might as well just play them in free play. What about 
about the other modes? Survival is just you trying to win as many minigames as possible against randos. It sucks. Daily Challenge is the same shit, except it's a preset selection of games. Also sucks. Coin Battle should have been the mode I wanted, except now it's just about getting coins instead of who won which game. Which also means you need to play at least one dumbass coin game per match. Everyone's favorite. Tag match is a tournament mode except just 2v2s, and trio is that except 1v3. In other words, you know that one thing that was literally just a simple setting in previous Mario parties? Yeah, well now to mask the low amount of content in this game. They're all their own dedicated modes. This is so user hostile. They just made things more of a pain in the ass for the consumer just so they can pretend they have more content. This also means there is not a tournament mode for free-for-all games. You know, the main selection of games people are going to want to play in a a tournament mode? How did they f*** this up so bad? Does Nintendo even care about Mario Party? Or do they just make them because they know the games will sell? Don't answer that actually. I don't want to hear the answer. Coney Island. So anyways, we're talking about mini games. In Coney Island, as ice cream falls from the sky and you need to catch it in your waffle cone. Player that catch the most ice cream wins. It's fun. I like it. Dude, I'm still trying to catch my breath from that game mode rant. Heart's Arrival. Shut up, you're wrong. I found out recently people really don't like this one. I've even seen people rank Piranha Pursuit over this. Okay, Piranha Pursuit is like a guaranteed and tedious win for the solo player. It just wastes everyone's time. Even if you think this game is super one-sided, which I'll get into in a sec, the duration of this game is solely based on the skill of the solo player. So if you're really under the belief that the solo player always wins, at least it doesn't waste your time. But here's the deal. I try to be fair. I had two recordings of this game initially, one where I was the archer and one where I was the target. Won both games. Hard CPUs, by the way. I heard people's opinion on Archer Rival after the fact. So to be thorough, I played four more games against Master CPU, and here was the outcome. Solo player only won once. Even if you set the computers to Master, there should never be any variability if a minigame is truly as one-sided as people claim. And on the game where I was the archer and I lost, I swear I was trying. What messes me up in Superstars is the angled perspective, which I'll get into in a sec. Either way, in Archer Rival, unless you're playing against complete idiots, accidentally shooting the stand-in enemy targets, which is very easy to do by the way, can absolutely lose you the game. Because the target players always move faster than the archer. Theoretically speaking, if those enemies were not there, it'd be nearly impossible to lose as a team of three. As mentioned earlier, superstars made it harder to aim as well. And that's a good thing because it makes it even more difficult for the archer. Because of that, the argument that this is a one-sided mini game is a more valid argument in Mario Party 2 than it is in Superstars, since the aiming in 2 is more dead-on and predictable. They have this forced perspective thing in Superstars, so unless you're in the center, your shot will not line up directly above you. All I'm saying is that in Piranha Pursuit, you can easily win as a solo player even if the CPUs are set to master, whereas I lost the game I played against the master CPU in Archer Rival. Plus, this is a really creative idea for a minigame, so at least deserves credit for that. Genuinely one of my favorite 1v3s. Mario's Puzzle Party. Match two blocks of the same color to score points. Every now and then you'll get a thwomp you can use to crush pieces on your board to half size. First player to 100 points wins. In my opinion, this is the best Tetris game they ever did in Mario Party. It's stupid simple, but still engaging, as a good Mario Party game should be. Now only if you didn't have to access a completely separate mode to change the score limit. Mush Pit. Everyone is in a room with several blocks, one with a Mega Mushroom in it. Player to find it and grab it turns Mega, and then gets to run around trying to squash the other players. This keeps going until there is just one player remaining. This used to be called Toadstool Titan, and I have no idea why they changed the name. I mean, Mush Pit? Sounds kinda dirty. Or some. Goomba Spotting. Whenever I put a game like this so high, I'm always curious to see the reaction I'm gonna get from others. Since I swear, if the minigame selection was up to the YouTube comment sections, the game would basically be nothing but action games. People here they have to count and then have a gag reflex. Goombas run by and you press the A button to add one to your counter. A counter you cannot see, mind you, which adds a bit of challenge. Person who counted the closest to the exact amount wins. I swear everyone's reasoning for not liking this game is that it's too easy. And every time, if you watch the people who make those claims play this game live, they are always off by one or two Goombas. You might say, one or two Goombas isn't that much. But the bottom line is that even being off by a single Goomba can lose you the game. You can pretend you hate this game all you want, but any time I see someone play this, they are dead silent trying to focus. And I love games that can do that. Bushy Penguins. A horde of penguins are running to the water on the left and you have to avoid them all. Get pushed into the water and you lose. Last player standing or players to outlast the timer, win. I'm pretty sure everyone who's ever played Mario Party likes this game. And I 
think a huge part of this game's enjoyment is how funny it is. Unfortunate that the sound design was way funnier in the original. Yep, they got to this one too. In Superstars, the penguins start making noises the second they enter the screen and then make a very muffled noise once they jump into the water. doesn't really convey much of anything. Whereas in Mario Party 5, you see this giant horde of penguins coming towards you and they're practically dead silent, which lets the overly dramatic piano take front and center. Then the second they start jumping off the iceberg, you just hear a bunch of screaming. It's honestly hilarious. Stop! Then there's the big penguins, which used to have giant stomping sounds put a lot of an emphasis on how big of a hazard they are. Not to mention, it's funny. Whereas in Superstars, I don't think there is any sound cue for the bigger penguins. All of this might seem really nitpicky, but one of Pushy Penguin's biggest strengths is its comedy. And if you subdue that comedy in any way, I mean, yeah, I think it's a valid critique. Also, this is completely unrelated, but in Mario Party 5, there are minigame categories, right? Like, if you just want the easy minigames to show up, there's an easy category. 5 also has a minigame category called Goofy Minigames. And Pushy Penguins is not in it! What?! This is like the goofiest minigame ever! Oh, but Ground Pound Down is in the Goofy category, because nothing screams Goofy like a bunch of rocks! What the fuck? Snowball Summit. Build and push snowballs at your opponents. You can roll your snowball to make it bigger, and the bigger it gets, the farther back it will push whoever you hit it with. Last person standing on the mountain wins. I'm honestly impressed with the attention to detail in this remake. I mean, they made this game look really nice. Your snowball even leaves tracks wherever you've pushed it now. Also, don't quote me on this, because I don't know this for sure, but it seems like you move faster on the thinner snow. Again, I don't know if this is actually the case or not, but if it is, I think that's a very nice addition. Book Squirm. Everyone loves this one. You're all on a giant book trying not to get flattened by the falling pages. Each page has holes in it you can slip through to make it safely to the other side. Miss a hole and you're out. Last player standing wins. It always surprises me how much hate Mario Party 4 gets until you bring up the minigames. And half of them, such as Book Squirm, have people like, Oh yeah, that's one of the best minigames ever. But here comes another sound design critique. They added this really annoying high-pitched <laughs> every time a page turns. This is in contrast to the original, which didn't have that sound, but instead had a giant thud anytime a page landed. It was cool. It really exemplified the size of the page and the immediate danger of the situation. That sound was completely removed from Superstars and instead replaced with a barely audible f Not to mention, the game used to be played at a lower angle, which helped make the pages feel even bigger than they already were. Although, those changes in Superstars don't detract that much from Book Squirm. I mean, not as much as many of the other remade games, at least. This is still one of the best minigames, and it plays just as well as you remember. This is a fan favorite for a reason. 99 minigames down, one to go. The number one minigame in Mario Party Superstars is... Shell Soccer. I'm not gonna lie to you, this surprised me probably as much as it's surprising you. With my two favorite minigames getting unfavorable changes in Superstars, I was intently searching for what would take their place as the number one game here. I didn't even remember this minigame from Mario Party 9, which I suppose isn't too surprising since not only have I probably played 9 the least out of any other console title, this wasn't even a minigame that could appear on the main game. You could only play this in the extra game section. Not too dissimilar from Superstars since you can only play this in free play or... <coughs> <coughs> But none of that explains why I have it as my number one. So why is it here? Well, for one, it's extremely creative. On the surface, this is just soccer. But instead of goal nets, you score points by kicking the ball into the other team's Goombas. This just works on so many levels. Firstly, it's that Mario spin you would expect to be put on a sports game. Volleyball and hockey are fun, but there's nothing really Mario about them. They're just volleyball and hockey. In shell soccer, you have people bashing into each other and shooting a shell. Not not even a ball, a shell, into other living things. That's just ingenious. Secondly, this design choice directly impacts the balancing. The game only ends once a team has rid of all the Goombas on the other side. Because of this, the better your team is doing, the harder it becomes to score further since you have less and less targets to shoot. This makes closer, more cutthroat games since if your team is losing, you have an easier time to catch up. Lastly, it's fast. The field is so small and actions are 
are so quick, players are constantly scoring, which aids the party game pacing very well. Again, I wasn't expecting to rank a minigame I didn't even know about as my number one, but this is such a well done game. I have zero problems with it. This is usually the part of the ranking video where I categorize everything by its star rating, but f*** that, man. Do you see how long I've been talking about Mario Party minigames for? This was the worst idea I've ever had, and I made a YouTube channel once. I'm done, okay? It's nap time. Good night! Thanks so much for watching. It basically took an entire month to make this, so I hope you enjoyed. I'd like to give a special thanks to my patrons, such as Abby Knudsen, Olivium, Amanda Guth, Cashinator, Dave Pacheco, Drew Kellenberger, GamePlayer1500, Jeffrey P. Long, John Hancock, Kinzel TN, Naomi Norbez, Victoria Mars, Rami Batter, and ya boy Busby. Again, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, have a good one.